Hey YouTube, so this is my end of year, I guess like summary, and I'm going to give some tips and stuff like that, my end of freshman year summary. Before I do, I just want to say a few things. So you'll see my hair is like kind of puffy, particularly on this side. I think my hair is thicker on the left side than the right. But anyway, I didn't really like brush through it all that much. I just had it in a ponytail before and I kind of finger combed it. Um, because in my previous video I was talking about, um, you know, that I was coloring it, I was all like stained and crazy looking. So I just wanted you to see the finished product, you guys should totally tell me what you think. Um, as well as, so this video is dedicated to, you know, the college students who, or the seniors who are going to start their freshman year in September, or, um, just anybody who has, you know, freshman year memories or tips, you know, definitely feel free to leave your comments, um, and people who aren't subscribed to me should totally subscribe to me and like this video and, you know, even share it. Oh, yes. I very rarely talk about sharing. I was talking about liking, subscribing, and commenting. Um, but, you know, hopefully these tips are helpful. Um... But as I said, so dedicated to, you know, like a general populace, but a more specific and special dedication to my friend Emily, who's starting at NYU in the fall. I'm so proud, like, I feel like a proud sibling or parent or, you know, um, but I'm really excited for her. And yesterday we were texting and, you know, I was asking her, she's almost finished with school, so I was asking her how things are going. And as I felt last year around this time, I was so overdoing schoolwork and I was like, I already got into college, why am I still doing this stuff? Um, but she asked for any wisdom that I might have to offer, and I decided that I'd just make a video so I can offer my wisdom, what little wisdom there is to everybody. I'm going to start, you know, with first discussing my final week, and final weeks rather, and then I'll give, you know, five or six tips. And before I get into that, one last thing, I, um, my background is the Hamilton soundtrack because so the cast album came out September 15th of 2015. I started listening to it maybe like early to mid-October, so it's definitely been the soundtrack amongst other things for my um, my college career, my under my freshman year time experience. You guys know what I'm saying. So, all right, final weeks. So, um scrambling to finish papers I had like take home essays and stuff like that and this past semester I was definitely struggling a lot I as I said in my video about my academic history and academic apathy I think that was episode 14 I um was just I I took a, I took on a lot and I always take on a lot more than I probably should um but I I've definitely learned a lot about my limits like no more online classes um and five classes is my limit, not six. Even though the sixth one was technically because the online class that I took in uh, winter year, I took an incomplete for, which I actually did not finish. So that's going to turn into an F. This is the first time in my life that I'm ever failing anything. Um, like even if I got like a low grade, like I just barely passed, I've never failed anything. But you know, I'm like, I'm not devastated by that. Like it's, I'm sad that it's, happened but I really I just did not I had too, so many things going on I forgot about it um I was taking another online class I don't know why I didn't learn my lesson from winter but I ended up dropping that class because I did not want to end up either having to take it incomplete or failing that and I knew that that would be the best thing for me was to drop it um all my other classes I definitely I pulled it together I did well um I took one incomplete another incomplete um because my computer was acting strange, like it wouldn't turn on, so I couldn't send my final essay in, in time, but I sent that in this weekend, so I won't even have to worry about that incomplete, like hanging over my head for the summer. Um, but this week was just, it was just crazy. So I had my finals, and then I had a performance at my music school. I have the video up, um, the You Could Drive a Person Crazy cover. Oh gosh, I'm sweating so much, it's so hot. Um, but so that night I came back to the dorm and I had some food left over. Now it was in a foil container, so I knew not to put foil in the microwave. However, I decided to put the food on the cover of the container, which was not made of foil. Oh my god. So I put it into the microwave and it starts smoking. Um, like I could smell that it was burning, so I opened it. And I second guessed my vision a lot. 
I opened it and I was like, are those flames? They were flames, guys. So I just like blew it out like a candle. And when it stopped moving, I was like, wow, those were really flames. So I didn't pay attention to what the cover was made of. It was made of cardboard. Guys, do not put cardboard in your microwave. Um, so that's how my semester was ending. Also, it was so hot this week. Like it was, um, and still hot, or I guess last week, cause it's Monday now, but it was eighties and above. Um, like, I, I don't think it went past 90, but it was like 85 to 90 during the day. And then it was in the high seventies at night. And the week before that, so two weeks ago, my sister and dad had taken home some of my stuff and, um, you know, I told her to take my fan because that week had been like low 70s, high 60s. So I was like, okay, it should be a stay like this. And we checked the weather and it was supposed to stay like that. It was horrible, guys. A lot of times I did get like a fairly good breeze from my window though. So that was, that was nice. Sorry, something's in my eye. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, final week scrambling to finish everything and just, you know. And yesterday I was packing up my stuff to head home, the, the last bit of my stuff, and it was really sad. Like, I'm not excited to be back home. My family, my mom, sister, and I moved in January to a new house. I've only been back here at most, like, five times. And, you know, so it doesn't, it doesn't smell like home. Like, it doesn't smell like our former apartment. It's really awkward for me, like, walking around. Like, in the old apartment, I could walk around with my eyes closed. Now I feel, like, really awkward where I step. I don't want to run into anything. I feel like I'm just trying, like, really hard and... My mom and I have already had out some uh, differences in opinion, um, but I'll, I think I'll go into that in another video about, you know, what to do after you get back home from college, but that'll probably, probably be later in the summer once I figure out what to do now that I'm back home from college. Um, so before I get into the tips, I guess I just want to talk a little bit about just freshman year for me as a whole. It was pretty good, as could, like, it was, it was really good, actually. I have a lot of people who hated their first semesters and stuff, and that's part of my first tip as, like, the reason why they hated their semesters. Um, but I, I think I had a really good year. I struggled academically, but socially, and just even, like, with, in terms of stress, like, I didn't get too stressed out. I definitely had a few moments where I was just like, what am I doing? But, you know, academically, because I took on three writing intensive classes, not a good idea, guys. I don't know why I didn't think that it would be, you know, intense. Um, but I mean, I went to two concerts last semester. I was joined, I went to the Mayday Parade Black Lines tour. Uh, I think we were the last tour date or the second to last tour date. Um, and then I went to see All Time Low at Madison Square Garden. That was awesome. I wanted to see a lot more concerts. I definitely wanted to be that person who went to concerts like every week, but um, I had, you know, work to do, and I was, um, like, yes, I did have the money, but I didn't want to spend the money on the concert and then be left, like, I wouldn't say poor, because that's extreme, but left, like, you know, not with a lot, so I thought more, I was being a bit frugal, and also, a lot of the concerts I wanted to go to were in Long Island, which is upsetting. I don't like Long Island. No offense to anyone who lives in Long Island. You guys are great people. I just don't like getting to Long Island. I don't have a car. It's illegal for me to drive. Um, and the LUR, L-I-R-R, Long Island Railroad. I do this every time. But, um, the L-I-R-R, it didn't stop at the venues I needed, so I'd probably still have to take a cab to get there, or, um, like a bus. I'm not a fan of buses. Um, but, yeah, so I'm definitely happy that I got to do that. Um, so, alright, on to the tips. So, my first semester, it's not, the, or the first semester rather, it's not the end of the world if you haven't made, like, automatically made friends or you haven't automatically become close to anyone. I was lucky because of the group chat. Um, so my, there's a schools app, and I know there are a lot of schools that are a part of it. My school just happened to be one of them. And one day someone posted you know, it was like, hey, send me a friend request on Facebook if you want to join a group chat for the freshmen. And so there were hundreds of us. And uh, by the start of the semester, there were like a handful of us that spoke regularly while other people would just pop in and out or just be creeps and just like, you know, read the messages but not say anything. So, um, you know, by the, the first day of the semester, someone created a subgroup 
and there were, I want to say, like, it went from, like, I don't know, over 50 of us, or 60, 70, I don't know, a lot, to maybe about 20, 15 to 20 of us, and during that first day, we all met up, and it was great, like, we had a, a base, a friend base, and people made friends who we kind of were in introduced to by proxy, we made, like, a lot of mutual friends, and it was really nice to have that foundation, um, but, you know, it's not... Like, that wasn't the only way <coughs> I made friends. I also made some friends out of necessity. You know, I asked people to read something on the board, and, you know, then they might group me outside of class, and a friendship would form after that. And some people, like, it was just they only assisted me in class, and that was it. Um, I also joined things. I didn't go crazy, you know, joining every club, but I joined the ballroom dancing class because I thought it would be interesting. I'm not a dancer, guys, and I'm still not. Um, and, you know, from the ballroom dancing class, one of the guys told me, about the literary magazine, um, because I told him what I planned on majoring in. He was the secretary for the literary magazine, actually. Or, I think he still is. So, it was just, you know, like, from there, it was really cool, and writing, writing's my thing. So, it was nice, and then one of my friends, um, a guy that I met through one of the group chat members, told me about the Multicultural Club, and now, like, those are the main places where I hang out, literary magazine office or the Multicultural Club. So a lot of my friends, they said they hated school for the first semester, their schools for the first semester, because they hadn't made any friends, um, but they never really did anything when I asked them about it. They were shy. And I totally get that. A lot of times freshmen are put into the same classes, at least for the first semester. Um, so if you were shy, then your fellow freshmen were probably shy too. Or you might have an upperclassman who they didn't, might not know that you're a freshman, but they already have an established group. And isn't that how it is with a lot of things though? Like, the freshmen are the newbies and are super shy while they're already established groups. And some freshmen come in together and have groups. But, you know, like, just what you would do as the new kid anywhere else, you know? Like, don't hate it. Um, I had a handful of friends as well that met people at clubs and they didn't, like, instantly become friends, like, exchange numbers or Facebooks. And, you know, it's not the end of the world. It was the first meeting. Um, and I, I don't mean, like, clubs, like nightclubs, I mean extracurricular clubs. Um, I think it's good if you have an outgoing personality, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. I'm shy initially, but even that, you know, even if it takes me a little while to talk to someone, I eventually do. So that's, that's basically, that's, that's my, my tip. It's not bad. Um, what did I say? Wow. It's, it's good if you have an outgoing personality, but it's not the end of the world if you don't, you know? Like, I assume that if you didn't make any friends, I don't know what to say. Um, you know, like in high school, if you didn't make any friends, like everybody, I feel like, always finds at least one person that they're with. Like they awkwardly ask them for something and they become friends or, you know, like it it works. It eventually works out for everybody. Um, my second thing, advocate for yourself. Whether you're comfortable with your disability or not, it's, you know, it's it's what you need to do. I don't feel like you should be embarrassed to tell a professor about accommodations you need. You know, your disability isn't going anywhere, most likely. So you shouldn't make yourself uncomfortable. For my visually impaired friends, you know, straining to see the board. And just for anyone with any type of disability, don't sacrifice, sacri sacrifice? What, what am I saying? Don't sacrifice a good grade because you don't want to ask for help um, or you feel awkward asking for help. I have a friend who wasn't sure how to talk to a professor um, about her disability, and she found out that her professor also had, like, a, a visual impairment. You know, you might have an instance like that. Just, you know, you don't look like you're visually impaired, so your professor probably doesn't look, um, might not look like he or she is visually impaired. Um, you know, some people think it's weak asking for help, but I disagree. It's not weak to know in what areas you have strengths and in what areas you don't. It actually makes you stronger to know when you need help and when you don't. Um, so, yeah. It, it's college is definitely about exploration, but I feel like some things you should try to have a general grasp on from the beginning, i.e. what accommodations you'll need for whatever your disability is or just whatever. Um, and people, uh, professors like give this spiel at the beginning of semesters in terms of joining the accessibility office. You don't have to be like physically or mentally dis like able disabled. Okay, I do. I say like way too much, and I can stop if I want to, but when I'm on a roll, it just it just comes out. But, you know, so if you have, 
if you suffer from depression or something like that, like you can be a part of, or anxiety, you can join the disability accessibility accommodations, whatever your school calls it, office. So, you know, let's say someone has very strong anxiety, then they can get double time on a test, provided, you know, of course, you have medical proof. Um, but, yeah, so that was like, I didn't even think about that. That was just like an additional one. But, okay, the next one. So don't be afraid to speak up for yourself or be persistent in something you want. So the first half kind of goes hand in hand with the previous tip, but it adds a little more. I had to argue during the first semester with my math professor and one of the people in the accessibility office about what I needed. And they insisted that I needed a note taker and reader in class. I disagreed. I felt that it'd be fine listening to the professor, just listening to the professor, what the heck? I felt that it'd be fine just listening to the professor, especially with the required, tu required tutoring sessions. However, I did need assistance in terms of doing my homework, not with the problems, but writing them down. I didn't, you know, I wouldn't be able to write in braille and have a vision teacher transcribe it, so write in between the lines and, you know, make you guys, make you sighted to be able to know what I said, um, you know, write in print between the braille lines. You know, I needed to read the work to someone and they would write it down. And one day I walked into the accessibility office for, and the tech guy was on the phone with my math professor. So I guess he didn't notice me standing there, he's also visually impaired. So, you know, I got to listen to his half of the conversation. He was talking about, you know, how sometimes it's hard for us to ask for help and, you know, other words like that. And I was upset. You know, I know math isn't my strong suit. I've always known that. People tell me that I'm good at it, but I've internalized the idea that I'm bad at math. So, you know, well, it's it's definitely, it's it's all internalized. So I, I think that I'm bad at math. I'm really good with numbers, but I'm bad with when you get to like algebra, trig, like that sort of thing. Once you start throwing letters with my numbers, it throws me off. Um, but you know, like, so I knew what I would and wouldn't need. And like, as I said before, I think I said before, I'm shy initially, but, and I also don't like confrontational situations, but I will do what I have to when I need to. Um, so I said nothing about overhearing the conversation, but I remained firm on like what help I wanted. Um, and they could only suggest things. It was up to me at the end of the day to decide what I wanted to do. Um, and you know, a lot of people have tried to like push what they thought I needed on me, but if you know what you need or, I mean, and honestly, you have to listen to what they say and take it with a, a grain of salt. Like, you know, I definitely understood their arguments and I, I like to think that I'm reasonable. Um, I'm very open-minded to most things and I realize that a lot of times, like I can be belligerent, at least mentally. So I'll force myself to really consider what other people say. And I have no problem. Um, like taking someone's advice or saying that I'm wrong. Um, well, no, it might be a little awkward, but I'll do it, you know? But in this case, I knew what I needed and I didn't appreciate them acting as though I didn't. Um, and you know, but I also mentioned persistence. I can't remember a specific instance at the moment, um, but I can make it up, make up an example. So if you want to talk, well, I guess persistence also just works and I was persistent about what I felt I needed. You know, I didn't back down. But, you know, let's say you want to talk to an, an advisor and they'll, so they'll get back to you in a certain amount of time. And there's nothing wrong with following up. You know, you might follow up after an interview saying thanks or something like that. So, you know, you can follow up if you've made an appointment with someone and they never got back to you if you want to schedule an appointment with someone. You know, you'll have to balance between being annoying and having making friendly reminders. But people are busy. They forget. They have other people they need to talk to as well. Um... And you know, this is far easier said than done, but it has to be done. Um, people who worked or did additional things besides simply being academic in high school should have experience with speaking up for themselves or speaking out and being persistent, but not everyone does. And while it may take a little while, a lot of things are on you now, you know? Like it's, it's you're, you're responsible for getting, turning in your papers, you're responsible for saying what you need, you're responsible for, um, you know, like getting to the people you need. And it sounds like a lot. And, you know, obviously there are people around to help. Um, you know, don't, and don't be afraid to ask for it. Like I said, in the previous tip, there are college advisors um, and counseling for a reason. Uh, the college advisors to help with your academic career. And some of them even offer like, if you want someone to talk to. But that leads me into my next tip. It's okay to see a counselor. 
There are so many taboos surrounding mental health and therapy. And while I did not go to the counseling office this year, um, as a soon-to-be psych major, uh, once I pass their stupid math classes, um, I see no problem in talking to people if you need help. Um, they're there for like, you know, academic problems, personal problems, although the academic problems, you know, are more so the, the they'll probably res re direct you to um, like a student advisor or advisor, whomever, whatever your school system is. Um, but, you know, if you're feeling stressed about the workload, then definitely see like, you know, the counselor or even if it's just talking to friends, it's nice to just talk to people and have people to listen to you. Like, I'll admit that I still struggle with discussing my deeper problems. I have no qualms discussing all manner of superficial stuff. Um, and it's, it's just, I don't know, it's easier for me to keep things in, but I do have like a few people with whom I, you know, discuss pretty much everything, even if it takes me a little while to get it out. And I feel like it's nice to have like that, that base of people, even if you don't go to a counselor, but if you're struggling with something, it might be embarrassing. I don't know. Let's say you're failing a class. It might be embarrassing to, to tell to someone, but it'll probably help. Oh, something else I didn't think about. If you're failing, failing a class or you feel like you're failing a class, talk to your professor. I have a friend who was failing a class and, you know, she was upset about it. But, you know, there's professors are definitely reasonable or most of them are. You know, they'll help you out. They'll try to work something out with you. There's a possibility of like, if you feel like you're going to fail the class, you can take an incomplete or um, you can take a class credit, no credit if you're going to get an S. I don't know, F rather, an S. Um, I like this part. Okay, you know, if you, you're going to get an F or something, you can take a class credit, no credit, um, which it, I think the name is different in different schools, but basically you can just not, you can finish the class, but you won't have gotten credit for it, so you have to retake it for the credit, but it, honestly, like, if you don't feel like it's right for you, then it's better to try to figure out what else you can do than getting the F. Oh, I just cringed. Um because of the stupid, that stupid uh, winter class. But, you know, um, what was I talking about? Oh, talking about your problems. So I also enjoy listening to others. Um, so, side note, YouTube subscribers, if you have a problem, you can send me a message, preferably on Twitter. But I guess YouTube's fine too. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice talking to a stranger. Um, I was more comfortable making these videos when I thought only strangers would watch. And I knew, like, my friends would probably eventually find out about it. But now I feel self-conscious when I make videos and I know my friends are watching but I enjoy making these videos so I won't stop but anyway you know I won't say don't be embarrassed to talk about your problems but I know from when I do confide in people that it has like a lightning effect is that effect writing like I'm a writer but I still struggle with apex and effect I think it's a lightning effect like it it gives you it, it lightens it helps lessen the load you know um even if the person doesn't have a solution it's nice to have someone to share your problems with Particularly, you know, I'm not particularly a stranger, but, you know, just someone with an unbiased opinion. Or, you know, it's nice to have a friend that can have an unbiased opinion, a stranger or a friend. When I give advice, I sometimes like to, you know, think about the unbiased perspective and then offer up my personal opinion or vice versa. But, you know, it's just, it's nice to have someone who can be unbiased, who can separate themselves from, you know, the sympathy for you or the sympathy or like how they would feel in that situation and just think, I guess, from a, a clinical perspective. Um, next, you know, try not to get too stressed out. Um, that's so much easier said than done. But like if you have an embarrassing moment, um, walking and sitting down in the wrong classroom, for example, you know, don't let it get to you too badly. Give yourself a few minutes to blush and wish to have a Rumpelstiltskin moment, you know, that you just poop away or a hole opens up and swallows you. But remember, it's not the end of the world. So many other people have, like, if you went through it, chances are someone else did too. Um, try not to get too stressed out. Like I said, you know, of course, getting work done is important. But also remember that you're a young person. Even if you don't hang out, binge watch a few episodes of something on Netflix or pick up a good book, work on a side project if you're an artist or something. Um, you know, remember to have a life. That said, however, don't get so caught up in your life that you don't do work. 
<laughs> I know it's so much easier said than done as a seasoned procrastinator, but really try to space out your work. Don't pull three consecutive all-nighters to finish up those four 10-page papers. Maybe try to make a schedule for yourself, you know, this much homework and then rest for the rest of the, and then like, you know, have you time for the rest of the night or a little you time and then finish up your homework. I personally think the former is more sensible though, because you know, homework first and then, you know, work and play. Because if you just have fun first and then you, um, you know, you just do your homework, you won't have as much energy, you won't be as focused on it. Um, and I guess that's all I can think of for like general school academic tips. But in terms of dorming, um, so because I dormed and uh, Emmy, who I told you this video is dedicated to, will be dorming. So if you have a single, I think it's a little bit harder. Um, like you have to depend on yourself a lot more. Um, one of my friends has a roommate and when her, one of their alarms go off, the other kind of wakes up and then it kind of makes them a little aware of the time in case they might have been like sleeping in. But when you're by yourself, like you have no one to wake you up. You have no one to notice like, hey, you haven't been to class in a couple of days. Everything's okay. Um, and this has not happened to me. Don't worry. Um, I, I skipped class. Um, I spaced out my skipping. I'm not much of a skipper anyway, or a cutter, whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's harder when you're just by yourself and it's all on you. But also, you know, in terms of, so in my first video, I told you guys that on my first day, I was really hesitant to go out like when there were a bunch of people in the kitchen because I felt really awkward. Um, I had to like depend on my vision because I was comfortable enough not to use my cane But also if I were like holding dishes like I don't have another I don't have a third hand to hold my cane So I felt really awkward like navigating around the people plus like holding my dishes I really didn't want to cause any accidents So a lot of times like I'd wait hours before I went to the kitchen when I heard there was like no one there a few people there and So I get it <laughs> if someone does that maybe the first day or so but don't don't let it become a habit because you know you you have to deal with the people eventually and maybe if you get an accident out of the way like you walk into someone like even two weeks ago i was leaving and there were a lot of people so i was trying to walk around them and i definitely had like a blind moment like i saw but i like put my hand out a little bit so i could make sure that i didn't walk into them because when i walked in i slammed right into someone so i didn't want to do it again and my RA, she's like hey are you okay and i was like yeah, and she like put her hand on my back and like guided me out of the kitchen. I was like, thank you. Um, but you know, there are always going to be awkward moments. And I know everyone's going to have their own little stories to tell about some awkward moment that they had. Um, and about maybe like being scared or um, hesitant to head out into the common areas. But you know, you definitely just kind of like with everything. You, you work around it, you get over it. I have faith in all of you guys that everyone will find like their their niche niche i've heard people say niche but then that's like the the philosopher nietzsche or is it okay total tangents but that's basically all i had to say um so you guys should comment and like and subscribe and share it if you think that these tips were helpful i know that it was pretty long but um that's i'm a novelist not a short story writer i'm with the words i'm not concise you know so yeah, I hope you guys liked it, and to you, Emmy, oh, I'm so proud of you, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, alright, until next time, guys. I'm not sure what the next video will be about, but I am taking a summer class. I took a, my math class credit, no credit, last semester, um, because I need a C, and I was going to get a D, so uh, I'm starting that in two days, so we'll see if I have any crazy professor stories, or we'll see what goes on with that. All right. See you guys.